Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Phase Mistress by Sound Toys. This is one of a series of Sound Toys plugin tutorials and reviews. So check out the others that I have done and I will be doing more. Um, so let's get started. Phase Mistress is a phase plugin tool. The people at Sound Toys are calling it an analog phase shifter. So there are three clear different sections here. And we'll just go through the three sections and we'll listen to how it sounds alongside some of the different use cases. So for me, phase is something that you'd use on drums, on bass and on guitar. And you can also use it on vocals. Also, the other thing you can use it on is to help with your mixing because phase also allows you to change where the sonic frequency sits in a mix. And that's really important sometimes for mixing purposes. Also, it can actually cancel some phase issues when you're mixing in mono. So there's quite a few use cases for phase mistress. So let's check it out firstly with drums. So we're just going to listen to some sample drums here without any phase on it. And we're just going to apply the phase mistress to it. Now this is the default sound. Now the first thing you'll see is it has tons and tons of presets. There's probably something that you need. If there's something that you need, it's probably in one of these presets. But instead of playing with the presets, I'm going to walk you through what all these control buttons here actually do. The easiest one to understand is mix. All mix does is apply the amount of phase to the mix. And you can just tell here that it's actually quite an important thing because a little bit of phase goes a long way. You don't really want to have too much phase in your mix, but it's just a bit just makes a difference. So the frequency knob, that allows you to set the midpoint of the phase notches. It determines the frequency along the spectrum where the phaser effect will be centered. So there's a few things that will often affect where you may want to set the frequency. So the type of input signal or the instrument to be phased, is the track bright, is it heavy, is it mid-range to focused, the type of phasing effect used, whether it's soft or thin, whether you need a little resonance um, or deep and wide fat resonance, and the type of depth of the modulation being used. I think the best way to let you know how it works is the more you shift it to the right, the more fud middle it sounds and the more you shift it to the left the more sort of high frequency and high pitched it sounds so let's just have a listen to uh, the movements of frequency just increase the mix there it's a bit fud more of a fud sound but as you increase the frequency it becomes a bit more higher pitched and you start hearing more resonance at the higher pitch level So now the resonance control greatly enhances the effect of the phase shift by creating resonant peaks in each of the notch filters. This boosts and enhances the harmonics contained in the input signal that falls around each of the notches. As you increase the resonance control, the harmonics falling into and around the various notches are exaggerated. So cranking up the resonance all the way will drive phase mistress into oscillation and can actually obscure the input signal as the filters and the phase effect are creating a signal on their own. Let's listen to uh, what happens when we increase the resonance. And we decrease it. So I find resonance really works well with hi-hats actually. And you can just change the amount there with mix. And finally, the mod control determines the amount of modulation signal that will be used to sweep the phaser frequency. So turning up mod will increase the amount of modulation and determine how far the frequency will either be swept above or below the center frequency. The amount of mod used will often be dependent on where the frequency knob is as well as where the type of modulation being sent out. So usually the faster the modulation, the less mod you want to use as the phase shifting can create a vibrato-like effect and make the signal sound out of tune. Now let's use mod and hear how that sounds. We'll just reduce the resonance and just change the frequency.
Let's mod all the way up. Let's just reduce the mod and reduce the frequency. So we're just going to set all these back to the default by double clicking. So that just brings everything back to default. And one thing we're going to check out now is the style editor. You'll find a wealth of style options to choose from based on classic hardware as well as completely new styles of phasing unique to Phase Mistress. So the style presets are named in some instances based on either the name of the original hardware, such as the DOD201 there, or Trine or based on the key aspects of the stages of phase used or sometimes just the way it actually sounds. Like Scoopy it sounds like a scoop. So for instance, the Rezo 6 Low is a six stage high intensity modern phase with resonant peaks tuned more towards the bass frequency. So now let's listen to the same drum, but with a different style. We'll just go back to that DOD one and we'll listen to Scoopy. So it sounds like a scooper, this one here. Rezo 6 mid. The trine. So as you can see, there's an endless amount of different emulations and sounds to choose from. You shouldn't be short of a sound using Phase Mistress. Now with regards to styles, if you have a particular style that you want, but you want to tweak it a little bit, you can just go into any of these stages or res modes or res offsets, as well as looking at the different colors, colorations available to you, intensities. You will switch from one of these to a custom style. As a starting point, I just do like to use some of the uh, suggested presets. So for example, we can just listen to a couple of the drum presets. So some of these really weird ones here, for example, you may want to reduce the mix. The more sort of harsh and sort of out there they sound, the more they sound cool by just mixing them out a bit. And of course, this is fully automatable. So you could obviously um, go into Ableton and increase the mix or decrease the mix. So thereby generating a lot of interest in your song. The other thing I wanted to show you is when you click the tweak button and then you click on one of these rhythmic effects, we'll just start with LFO. You've got some pretty interesting combinations available. So let's go into one of the bass tracks that I loaded a bit earlier. It's a bit loud, so we we'll just reduce the volume. And we'll just bring Phase Mistress into the bass track. Now if we click on Tweak and we click on LFO, what we've got here is the shape of the LFO. So what we can do is we can change the rate of the LFO. So it just changes the uh, rate that the LFO moves, as you can see here. And this is a shape, a triangle shape. And we've got all these different shapes to choose from. We can choose square. And not only that, um, you've got other different types. So we, for example, we could choose rhythm. So this just brings the sine wave in, but it's uh, repeated eight times. So you can, for example, double click this and switch the sine wave off. So it only applies to the first four bars and the last two. Rhythms are interesting. So you could, for example, just change how often uh, the thing oscillates. You can actually change the swing. And obviously that combined with uh, changing the frequency and resonance gives you some really interesting sounds and we can even change some of these styles. We can um, this automatically defaults to uh, syncing with MIDI, syncing with the tempo of the DAW, but if you unclick it, 
you can actually just go in and change the tempo to whatever you want and it's not synced. Now the other options you have are things like envelope. So the attack will just bring the threshold through a bit faster. Then you've got ran sorry, you've got then you've got random, which is random, but we can actually still change some things like the rhythm. And then we have step. And then we have ADSR. But for me, the best use case here is rhythm. Because you just have so many options. So you even have quite a lot of presets here. So we just even bring, say, for example, rhythm to the drum. Let's get a preset going. Now another use case here is a guitar. So let's listen to the guitar without the face mistress. So you can, the other thing I didn't say is you can obviously change the input and output signals. But I just tend to use, unless something drastic is needed that stays, to, stays in its default. And if we click on tweak, we have some other uh, options. So you can change the analog effect style, fat, pump, save, and we can change the frequency mode. Res, res mode. And we can reverse the, the uh, oscillators. And we've got left and right offset, which means pretty much uh, how much the left hand side of your speaker gets of the modulated sound versus how much, say, the right hand side gets. Now let's bring the rhythm here in because this is where it's really cool. And we can change the, the position of the sine wave there. We can change the mode. Just change the shape slightly here, from sine to linear to this expo one. There's a reverse one as well, and symmetric one. And there's all these other ones you can choose from. We can just choose square for now. Just to make things a bit easier and faster, I'm just going to go to the guitar presets and just choose any one of these um, presets. Now let's bring a fourth track in. And we'll put the Phase Mistress on that track, which is a pads track.
So that's pretty much it. So for phasing, uh, the phase mistress gives you pretty much endless control. If you've got any questions, put them into the comments below and um, I'll do my best to give you an answer. If you want to see more videos about Sound Toys plugins, follow me and click on that bell button that will give you a reminder every time I create a new video. So anyway, I hope this was of use to you guys. Hopefully we'll um, see you guys in the future. So thanks. Bye.